Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. This morning on GMSA, the Amber Alert continues for two sisters in Texas. What investigators are now saying about the suspect was actually the girl's grandmother. Back here at home, San Antonio firefighters battling flames on the city's south side. What we've been able to learn in the past few hours. And taking a live look out of the Alamo City, 52 degrees now. What does the rest of the weekend look like? We're going to check in with Sarah Spivey in just a few moments. But for now, good morning. It is 6 o'clock. It is Saturday, January 21st. And I got to say, so I dropped my girlfriend off at the airport this morning. Mm -hmm. And driving on 281, heavy sprinkles starting to hit down. I had a, the tiniest bit of sprinkles when I got here the case at parking lot. All right, so is the rain over? You know what? We might have some of those sprinkles throughout the day today, Max, but again, just sprinkles. You know, I, we are not going to be getting any significant rainfall for us at all today. Uh, maybe if you're lucky, like you said, maybe you have to turn on those windshield wipers once or twice, but that's about it. Otherwise, outside right now, it's 52 in San Antonio and cloudy, 53 at Simpson, 53 Kelly, and then 52 in Converse there on the east side of town. So today, a few sprinkles early, but we will be seeing clearing skies later in the day. High temperature of 65. Generally, though, today is going to be cloudy and cool. Tomorrow's my pick for the weekend. We'll wake up at 39 in the afternoon, 67. Totally sunny for your Sunday as well. Sprinkles a little bit difficult to detect on the radar, but we can see some out there. I'll have a look at that radar and, of course, better rain chances for us in the next five days. Coming up soon, Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. New this morning, San Antonio firefighters tackled a blaze at a convenience store in the city's south side. It happened just after 3.30 early this morning at the Shop and Go along Commercial Avenue. Investigators say the fire started outside the building, and the building was taken over by those flames by the time they arrived. The buildings had heavy damage, but no injuries were reported. Police still asking for your help in finding two children. The Amber Alert that you got on your phone yesterday, well, that Amber Alert is still active this morning. You may have even seen some of these alerts on traffic signs in and around San Antonio. So this is what we know. Police believe sisters, six-year-old Jennifer Burns and nine-year-old Jessica Burns are with their grandmother in a black Ford Escape with Texas license plate MTC6093. Investigators say they were last seen in the North Texas town of McKinney Thursday night. If you have any information that can help investigators, you're asked to call police on the number at your screen 972-547-2700. We have new details this morning on a shooting at a Walmart in southern Indiana. Police say a former employee walked into the store with a gun, telling workers to line up. Then they started shooting at least one person wounded. As ABC's Ty Hernandez reports, police are praising the actions of one employee as they release body camera footage. Video taken from police body cameras showing the heart-pounding moments as police officers tried to stop a reported active shooting inside a Walmart in Evansville, Indiana. When police got to the scene, investigators say officers immediately went into the store as people were running out. Police searching aisle by aisle looking for the gunman. He was all over the store. Um, you know, he would shoot at officers and move. Officers killing the suspect after a shootout. <laughs> Authorities identifying the suspect as 25 year old Ronald Ray Mosley, a former employee at that Walmart. Police say Mosley walked into a break room, told everyone to line up against a wall, then shot a woman in the face. We're told she's in stable condition. Authorities crediting another worker with saving lives, saying when Mosley chased after someone else, she left and called 911, then went back to the break room and got others to safety by locking the door. I have no doubt that he was going back to finish what he started and we would probably have a, a dead victim today instead of one that's alive. Court documents obtained by ABC show that Mosley had exhibited violent behavior in that store before, allegedly attacking four co-workers last May. Just hours before Thursday's shooting, Mosley was in court to face battery charges in that case. Walmart released a statement saying the entire Walmart family is shocked by the senseless violence. Our hearts are with our associates at this time. Ty Hernandez, ABC News, New York.
Topping your morning headlines, the company behind last year's baby formula shortage is under criminal investigation. Abbott Laboratories infant formulas plant in Sturgis, Michigan was shut down for months last year after an FDA inspection found bacteria in several areas. The, that bacteria can be deadly to infants. Several formulas made at the plant were recalled, creating another hurdle for families struggling to get formula after supply chain issues. Meanwhile, the FDA are relaxing some rules to make ibuprofen more accessible to hospitals and to health systems. Liquid ibuprofen products, they're used to treat the current surge in respiratory infections because some patients can't swallow solid pills. The FDA says they're aware of reports that hospitals were actually having a lot of trouble trying to get a certain approved version of the liquid drug. This move does not include over-the-counter forms of the medication. And the first Native American woman in space is making history again. NASA astronaut Nicole Mann completed a seven-hour spacewalk to prep the International Space Station for more solar panels. Mann joined NASA's astronaut program in 2013 and worked on the spacewalk with an astronaut from Japan. She traveled to the ISS in October for a five-month stay. Way to go. Time now, 6.06, 52 degrees out. So Still ahead on GMSA, David Elder shows us a local restaurant serving the largest margaritas oh. we've ever seen, <laughs> where you can find them coming up on Texas Eats. Breakfast of champions. Mm -hmm. And after the break, we're going to get you ready for the playoffs. Cowboys, Niners taking the field this weekend, shining a spotlight on a Wagner alum, former UTSA offensive lineman in San Francisco, what are you saying about the matchup? In just a few moments. 52 degrees at 606. Max and I had the teeniest bit of sprinkles this morning on our drive. But is that going to be ca the case for the weekend? Sarah Spivey says, not really. She'll explain when we come back. It's almost time for the Cowboys 49ers playoff game this weekend. And KSAT's Larry Ramirez is out in Santa Clara, California, previewing the upcoming clash. You going to try to guess the score? No. Okay. Oh. I don't want to jinx anything. Okay. You were real optimistic last weekend. Hey, it worked. I did work. <laughs> All right. So Larry met up with a Wagner alum and former UTSA offensive lineman, Spencer Buford, and his story is a great one. Ever since the fourth round draft pick joined the Niners, he's been turning heads. All right, so we asked Niners head coach Kyle Shanahan about this rookie guard, and here's what he had to say. Uh, he's done a, a great job. Um, you know, some of the um, people we lost in our own line last year and some of the new things we had to do this year going into the draft and to be able to... Um, you know, we took a, a shot on him there in the fourth round. He had a lot of talent, got to play a lot there. Um, but we didn't know if he'd be able to come in and be ready right away. We thought we might have to develop him a little bit. And for him to come in and us throw him there, right in OTAs, and him be able to hold that spot down, he's done a great job. Um, battled through a, an ankle sprain about a month ago. Um, but it was really cool because that last week was his best game of the year. Um, so he's been getting better each game, and uh, he's got a chance to really help us here over the next few years. I just uh, asked Coach Shanahan about you, and he told me he felt you were coming off your best game of the season. What does that mean to you to hear that? Um, we're just going to build off of it. At the end of the day, like I said, there's always room for improvement. Um, I, I thank him, but uh, we're going to look forward to make sure, like I said, just making sure we can do some more things in order to build off of what we did last week and hopefully just keep improving throughout this post uh, postseason. Tell me what you know about this Niners-Cowboys rivalry, particularly in the playoffs. I hear about it all the time, especially being from Texas. You know, I grew up a top Cowboys fan. Um, but at this point, I mean, everybody pretty much knows what it is, bang, bang, Niners game. Uh, so we're going to go out there and do what we're supposed to do, do what we're supposed to do, play our brand of football. All right, so Spencer tells Larry that this week's been great. He's really locked into the playbook. And we'll have more from our one-on-one -on -one with Spencer later this evening at 5 p.m. right here on KZ12. And it is so funny. I mean, you grow up a Cowboys fan, and now yeah. you're playing them in the playoffs. That's Ooh. so cool. That is, that's a special experience Absolutely. right there. But, hey, go Cowboys. Sure. <laughs> All right, so, Sarah, we saw some sprinkles this morning, but are we done with it for the day? 
Uh, you know, we are going to continue to see some sprinkles, I think, through about lunch, uh, but those clouds are going to be pretty stubborn, so it does look like we're going to be seeing temperatures on the cooler side during the day today. Let's take a look outside right now with live cam. Cloudy, 52, and winds are from the east southeast at about 5 miles per hour. Now, when we take a look at temperatures around the south central Texas region, it's it's cool morning for us. You know, temperatures usually this mor uh, during the mornings in late January are in the 40s, so we're a little bit warmer than average, but still you'll need that light jacket with you. 50 in Kerrville, 46 in Rock Springs, 55 in Del Rio, 56 in Catula, 53 in Kennedy, 53 in New Braunfels, and 53 in Gonzalez. Let's take a look at the satellite and radar right now. This is a look at the live radar uh, around South Central Texas. You can see that there's more organized rain out toward Houston uh, and across the coast, but a few sprinkles here locally around uh, areas like Gonzalez, Floresville, Guadalupe County, and even around San Antonio. Very, very light returns on the northwest side of town right along I-10. Notice how light these showers are. I actually turned up the intensity so that we could see the sprinkles. Yeah, you may have to turn on your windshield wipers once or twice early this morning, but we do not anticipate much rain. Here's a look at the future cast, though. There will be a front, a very weak Pacific front that's going to move through throughout the day. This is eventually going to clear skies from from west to east snapshot at nine o'clock this morning. This is a look around lunch again. A sprinkle or two around San Antonio is possible, but skies will be clearing across the hill country around lunch. Then by the middle of the afternoon, that's when we expect skies to clear here in San Antonio. Still possible to see some showers across our coastal communities, but here in San Antonio after lunch, no sprinkles uh, around anymore, and then we'll be actually ending the day with clear skies. So as far as high temperatures go, the further west you go, the for, further uh, the warmer you'll be, and that's because areas like Del Rio are going to be seeing sun a lot sooner than San Antonio. It'll be 71 degrees in Del Rio, but around San Antonio and in the hill country, mid 60s is a good bet, right around 65. And the further east you go, we may struggle to get out of the 50s, like in Gonzales and Hallettsville. So just to summarize everything I said, here's your KSAT 12-hour forecast for San Antonio: cloudy through uh, again the midday hours here. A Spray sprinkle is possible early this morning. Around noon, it'll still be pretty cloudy, 56 degrees, so cool all morning long. And it's in the afternoon that we'll start to see some sun. 65 degrees for the high temperature, partly cloudy just before the sun sets, right at around 6. So we'll eke out in about an hour or two of sunshine. Here's a look at our weather setup across the state. The reason for the heavier rainfall across Houston and the coast is because of this low pressure system. This is expected to move along the coast throughout the day today. And, and again, here's a look at that front that's going to help clear our skies later on today. You can see that all the precipitation up across Dallas, even some snowfall across Kansas and Oklahoma. This is, however, going to set up a very beautiful Sunday for us. Totally sunny skies tomorrow. We'll wake up chilly at 39 degrees, 67 for the high temperature, a touch breezy with gusts up to about 20 miles per hour. A gorgeous Sunday compared to the cloudy day today. Then our next big thing is a rainmaker on Tuesday. Currently, that's currently in the uh, Pacific Northwest at the moment, uh, but this is going to be our best chance for rain in a while. Now, right now we're holding about a 40 to 50% chance for scattered showers, mainly in the pre dawn hours of Tuesday and early Tuesday morning. We'll be talking a little bit more in depth about that rain chance coming up in the next half hour, but I just wanted to let you know that it is going to be uh, entirely possible for us to see some health the rains briefly on Tuesday, but behind that system, very windy on Tuesday. We're talking gusts up to 40, 45 miles per hour on Tuesday behind that chance for rain. Again, we'll talk a little bit more in depth about that coming up in the next half hour. All in all, though, it looks like we're going to be ending January cooler than the first half of January. No highs in the 70s there on, on that forecast, guys. I really hope we get some rain out of that front. Me too. Me too. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. 616, 52 degrees out. Coming up before 630, a little girl on the East Coast making headlines after a strange request to local police and why Santa may be involved. It's January, right? Yeah. Just making sure. <laughs> David Alder showing us some of the largest margaritas from across the Alamo City. We have a preview of this week's Texas Eats. That's like a bowl of margarita. That's a lot of sodium in there. <laughs> All right, pick three, two, four, six, fireball two, daily four, six, three, five, eight. 
uh, Fireball 2. Cash 5, 11, 16, 18, 34, 35. Here we go. Mega Millions, did you play? No, because it's a small job. Uh, that's true, because we just had the 1.3 yeah. billion or whatever. Yeah, wait until it gets to, you know, the billions again. Uh, I still didn't learn who the person from Maine was. I don't think anyone had. Mm, here, here are your Mega Million numbers. Tell no one. Mega Million numbers. <laughs> 20, 29, 31, 64, 66. Big number 17, Mega Plier 4. Good luck. We'll be right back. Part of enjoying yourself while you're out here is that they have a full bar and you guys are making different kinds of drinks but look at the size of this one what's the name of this drink Jarro. and what goes inside of this Jarro one? de tequila it's gonna be uh, one full bottle so it's half uh, tamarind vodka half tequila and then we put uh, tamarind carrito lime orange and grapefruit so it's gonna be very citrusy oh nice so you're actually supposed to scoop it out of this yes and serve it into a cup so I'm gonna hand you a cup Okay. I'm gonna drink it out of this. Oh my god. <laughs> Cheers, Cheers to you. This looks amazing. <sighs> that is so good. It is so Thank refreshing. You so much. Oh my gosh. You know, it's a lot of tamarind. It's a lot. Um, and I love, I love a good dressed drink. Do you think David finished the whole drink? No. <laughs> also selfish, he should have shared. That's true. I like how it comes with like a Whatever it's called. I don't know. Something you'd use in the punch bowl. A scooper? Like a... Yeah. I wasn't going to say scooper, but yeah. One <laughs> sure. of those things. Uh, a ladle. ladle. Thank, Thank you. you. Yes. Our I like it how it comes with... That's how you know it's meant for sharing. Sharing, David. Time now. 622, 52 degrees out. Up next on GMSA, Southwest Airlines employees are getting a late Christmas gift after a brutal nationwide meltdown last month. That's coming up in just a few moments. This morning, Southwest Airlines has agreed to pay its pilots close to $45 million in bonus gratitude pay. All right, so this move comes after the company's service meltdown during the holiday travel season last month. Both of us covered this situation. It was chaotic to say the least. A lot of other Southwest employees who worked through this chaos, they're also going to receive compensation, although the airline didn't specify how much. Southwest has about 9,400 pilots, and remember, they canceled about 17,000 flights between December 21st and December 29th. It cost the company between $725 million and $825 million. And before we go to break a cute story out of Rhode Island involving Santa, WJR News in Cumberland, Rhode Island reports 10-year-old Scarlett mailed a package to police just after Christmas. Inside was a sample of a cookie and carrots left for Santa and the reindeer. Oh. She was wondering if they could take a sample of the DNA and see if Santa's real. <laughs> Smart girl. <laughs> Cumberland police say they're on the case and sent an evidence packet to the state forensic unit. She has watched too many. Uh, CSI. Yeah. Yeah. Crime, crime docuseries. I commend her. Right? We, you girl. know what? When you're growing up, you wonder, are they real? And your parents are are gonna tell you the real. Now, she's asking the pros. Yeah. Appreciate it. <laughs> Time now, 627, 52 degrees out. Still ahead at 630, the golden years are anything but golden for thousands of seniors who can't make ends meet. So if you or someone you know is financially struggling, we have some help. Plus, we are tracking new details of a brawl at a youth basketball game in Universal City. What police say started it all next. Good morning and welcome back. It is 6.30 this morning. It is Saturday, January 21st, and I say this all the time. I love San Antonio for so many reasons, mm -hmm. but one of them is that it is 60s and sunny in the middle of January. It really wasn't that sunny yesterday. No. And it was a little chilly. It was like those like little breezy, I don't know. So I'm I want to put this Texas into perspective, girl, so all right? I know. When you talk to people in the Northeast, I know. when they're battling blizzards <laughs> and, you know, negative temperatures, Sarah Spivey, this is beautiful. Yeah, but let's keep on going. I don't know what you're talking about, Max. We didn't see any sun yesterday <laughs> at all. It was it was cloudy yesterday. And guess what? Today, for most of the day, it's going to be cloudy as well and even some sprinkles. But we will see some sun by the end of the day. And tomorrow, Max, tomorrow, 
sunny and 60s man it's going to be beautiful all right let's take a look at the live radar we've got some very light showers sprinkles in fact moving on uh, throughout bear county and let me give you a neighborhood view here just to the north of warren high school next to northwest vista and leon valley there's a shower there moving through uh, just to the east part east side of bandera there inside of 1604 some very light rain showers uh, and off to the east near seguin you're seeing some light rain as well uh, near seguin high school uh, but otherwise we're dealing with a cloudy start to the day temperatures right in the low 50s uh, through the midday hours we'll have a chance for a sprinkle or two do not expect a ton of rain in fact maybe just a sprinkle but no significant rainfall we'll finally start to see some sunshine after about 2 p.m here in san antonio 65 for the high so a cool day all in all and then once the sun sets it's going to get chilly if you have saturday night plans temperatures are going to quickly get get down into the low 50s and upper 40s. So bring the jacket with you if you have plans to be out and about later on tonight. Much better weather tomorrow. Totally sunny skies. And if you're hoping for rain, we've got better rain chances in the forecast later on in the upcoming week. I'll give you those details in just a few minutes. Max and Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. New this morning, arson investigators called to the scene after San Antonio firefighters had to put out a fire at a convenience store on City Southside. KSAT's Alyssa Cole is live at the scene with the latest. Alyssa, do we know how that fire started? Good morning, Max and Sarah. We do know how that fire started again. I am on the south side of San Antonio. This convenience store behind me caught on fire. The fire started in a large container outside of the store and it quickly spread to the front. I'm going to take a step aside so you can get a look at it. This is what's left over after that fire. Now, according to San Antonio Fire Department, when they arrived, the building was fully engulfed in flames. And again, as I stated, it started outside of the building in a large container. Now, the firefighters, they had to act in a defensive mode to put that fire out. And after a short time, they were able to control that fire. Now, as you can see right now, looking on your screen, that convenience store right here on Commercial Avenue did sustain very heavy damage. There are a few people standing out here um, waiting, of course, until the sunrise to see what they can salvage from that incident. But as a uh, San Antonio Fire Department, they didn't give an estimate of the damage, but arson was called to the scene. We haven't found any details or heard any details yet if arson was a factor. So we will be waiting to get more details on that. We'll update you in our later newscast and online at ksat.com. Back to you all. Thank you, Alyssa. Well, police are asking for your help trying to find two children. The Amber Alert that reached your phones yesterday, well, that Amber Alert is still active this morning. You may have even seen some of these alerts on traffic signs around the Alamo City. So police believe two sisters, six-year-old Jennifer Burns and nine-year-old Jessica Burns, they believe that they are with their grandmother in a black Ford Escape, the Texas license plate MTC6093. Investigators say that they were last seen in the north Texas town of McKinney on Thursday night. If you have any information that can help investigators, you're asked to call the number on your screen. That is 972-547-2700. A youth basketball game that ended with punches being thrown by parents is now under investigation by Universal City Police. So video shows the fight started after one player was punched by a member of the other team. Witnesses told police they saw, quote, all the parents running onto the court and start fighting each other. So far, no charges have been filed. A parent and coach with the league, David George, was there Sunday. He hopes the incident serves as a lesson to families in youth sports to talk about how to control their emotions for both kids and adults. Make conscious decisions. And I know it sounds weird, but in the heat of the moment, some people just don't have that mind frame. And we try and teach those kids that. The teen who was punched is okay. A partner of Full Court Athletics told KSAT over the phone they are discussing consequences for those involved. You can read more about this story right now on KSAT.com. Well, looking ahead, we've seen the construction along the St. Mary's Strip for a very long time. And now crews are breaking ground just south of the Strip, building a new San Antonio police substation. So construction happening on the corner of St. Mary's and Locust Streets. Crews there are saying that the project isn't expected to impact the street in the area. Councilman Mario Bravo says 28 new police officers will be assigned to the new substation. 
we have 2,300 housing units that are either in design or being built right now in this area. There'll be more presence and uh, faster response times for the area. Project is scheduled to be finished by early 2024. Well, at least 2,000 doses of Narcan were distributed among Bear County deputies Friday thanks to some new funding. So Narcan is a life-saving tool that can reverse the deadly effects of opioids. And now Bear County deputies have a 20-month supply that was purchased using $4,000 from a state opioid settlement fund. Previously, the county relied on grant money to pay for Narcan. A lot of first responders keep it on hand because of overdose calls. So it's come to the point where wherever you find Bear County deputies, you will absolutely find Narcan not too far away uh, and the training that goes along with it. Last year, patrol deputies administered Narcan 50 times in the field and 10 times in the Bear County Jail. And looking ahead, the Air Force major accused of killing his wife will face trial on Monday. So the judge overseeing Andre McDonald's case has actually put certain restrictions on what jurors can hear during the trial. McDonald's wife and Dreen's remains, they were found burned months after she disappeared in 2019. For days, McDonald's legal team has tried to get evidence thrown out. The, the judge has ruled the jury will not be allowed to hear about the time officers arrested McDonald outside a gun shop. That arrest happened two days after his wife's disappearance. Now, the judge also will, he won't hear, or the jury won't hear about a handwritten note in Andre's pocket, listing things like gas cans, flashlights, and bags. The jury will see search warrants that mention the victim's friend finding blood and hair in Andrine's bathroom. They could also hear about Bear County deputies and the time they found a shovel. Again, the trial starts Monday. You can watch the live stream on KSAT.com, the KSAT Plus app, KSAT's YouTube channel as well. We're also going to update you throughout the trial uh, during the day on our newscast right here, KSAT 12. To a scam alert this morning, there's an increase in calls collecting money from innocent victims, especially in Kendall County. Investigators say police, excuse me, investigators say people posing as a sheriff's deputy have already taken $6,000 from people in the area. Just take a listen to one of the calls. Good afternoon, Ms. This is Lieutenant Majika with the Kendall County Sheriff's Office. I was trying to make contact with you regarding some paperwork that I come across my desk, ma'am. If you could call me back at your earliest convenience. The sheriff's office says they do have a lieutenant by that name, but the person calling is not that actual deputy. Investigators say the scammers are also spoofing their number to resemble your area code. The caller usually claims there was a warrant, a missed jury duty date, or some other infraction, and then asks the victim to send money online. The sheriff's office is asking people who to receive this call, like this one, to report it to their office. Local businesses, employment rates, inflation, recession, we hear those terms all the time. But there's so many questions associated with them when it comes to our local economy. That is why tomorrow morning on our 8 a.m. show, we have two leading essay segments. At 8 a.m., we're speaking with the North San Antonio Chamber of Commerce. We're going to be talking about business growth, plans for 2023 in and around San Antonio, how many new people are coming here and new businesses are arriving to the Alamo City, and what happens if we do see a recession. Then at 8.30 a.m., we're joined by the San Antonio Chamber of Commerce Interim President and CEO, Dave Peterson. We're going to be talking about legislative priorities, talking about what is going on at the Capitol, property tax relief, infrastructure, and military affairs. If you have any questions, you can submit them right now. Just head to the Leading Essay section of KSAT.com. Join us tomorrow morning, 8 a.m. and 8.30 a.m. Time now, though, 640, 52 degrees. Well, coming up on GMSA, this good boy you see on your screen is a proud owner of a new world record. Oh. We'll explain before 7 a.m. And after the break, golden years. Anything but golden for thousands of seniors who still can't make ends meet. So if you or someone you know is struggling, we have some help. 52 degrees at 640 this morning. Sarah Spivey says, Maybe, maybe some sprinkles, but that's really not going to be the story this weekend. She says it's going to be beautiful, but she's also going to tell us about a front happening the next couple of days. We come back. Good morning and welcome back. So this morning, seniors are outpacing just about every other age group across the country that finds themselves living in poverty. 
In fact, with inflation and a possible recession looming on the horizon, the numbers are expected to get even higher. Nancy Alvarez has this story. Now I'm homeless because when I got out of the hospital, I lost everything. So I had no place to live. I didn't have no place to stay. I do recall sleeping one night behind a dumpster. Linda Flores is homeless after a car accident left her with a long recovery. Her story is one of thousands playing out around the country at a staggering rate. According to the latest U.S. Census Bureau data, more than 10 percent of the elderly population is living below the poverty line. That means over 15 million older adults age 65 plus are economically insecure with incomes below 200 percent of the federal poverty line. These older adults are trying to live on just under twenty six thousand dollars a year. There are plenty of resources available to struggling seniors. A recent study found that less than half of eligible seniors participated in the Federal Supplemental Nutrition Assistance Program, or SNAP. Eligible elders can get an extra $250 a month for groceries. Pricey health insurance and prescription costs can take a big bite out of retirees' incomes as well. The Medicare Savings Program may be able to cut costs on monthly premiums. In addition, those enrolled in Medicare Part D, which covers prescriptions, should check to see if they qualify for extra help. The benefit can be worth more than $5,000 a year. For more help, the National Council on Aging has a benefits checkup website where you can learn about more than 2,000 resources available to struggling seniors by zip code. I have a lot of hope. I have faith in myself that I'm going to go back to reality, okay? Start all over again. And I think that I it's going to be okay. I'm Nancy Alvarez reporting. All right, time now, 646, 52 degrees. As you mentioned earlier, yesterday was gloomy out there. Yeah, a little bit. Will we see sunshine today? We will, but we have to wait a while to okay. see the sun, okay? <laughs> the sun really won't come out until after 2 p.m. here in San Antonio, so it's going to be a mainly cloudy day. All right, it's cool, though, this morning. It's 52 at the airport, 52 in Converse, 51 in Seguin. Good morning in Canyon Lake. It's 52 degrees, 50 in Kerrville, 48 in Lost Maples, 53 in Hondo. As we take a Look outside right now. You can see that those clouds are here. They're here to stay until the early afternoon, and there's even some areas of sprinkles. Here's a look at the radar right now and the satellite for that matter. Let's go ahead and take a little closer look uh, toward the coastal plain. You can see that there's some isolated sprinkles and light rain showers pushing into Lavaca County from DeWitt County near Gonzales and near Seguin as well. Closer view around the Alamo City, and let's get a neighborhood view in here uh, right near Bandera. Uh, just to the northeast of Brandeis. You can see that there's a light sprinkle pushing toward UTSA across UTSA Boulevard. And then on the northeast side of town, we've also got some sprinkles too, uh, right near a Wetmore uh, toward Madison High School. Some very light rain being reported at the airport. Otherwise, though, it is a cloudy and cool morning. These sprinkles are going to be possible through uh, about lunch. Here's a look at the future cast. A front is going to help to clear clear skies, but gradually notice that it gets clear in areas in the hill country way before San Antonio. Clear skies out west as early as lunch, but even around 12 o'clock, 1230, we could still see a sprinkle or two. That front will move through in the middle of the afternoon, and that's when we'll see skies clear here, and we will eventually see the sun after about a day and a half of cloudy skies. So just to summarize everything, here's your KSAT 12 hour forecast. Cloudy and near 52 at 10. Uh, uh, and uh, it does look like we're going to be seeing temperatures right into the low 60s early this afternoon, 65 degrees north winds at about five miles per hour. So a cool day, pretty average Our average high temperature this time of year is 64. So we'll be near that average. But notice that it's going to be a lot warmer out west toward Del Rio, Eagle Pass, Yavaldi. High temperatures in the low 70s because they'll get to see sunshine. You'll get to see sunshine out west a little bit sooner than us in San Antonio. Temperatures struggling to get out of the 50s out east toward Gonzales. It'll be 66 in Port SA, 66 in Castroville, 66 in Bulverde, 64 in Canyon Lake, and 68 in Kerrville. Let's take a quick check of our weather setup. Showers across the Houston area because of this low in the Gulf of Mexico. Meanwhile, here's that front that's going to be moving through San Antonio today. This is going to set up a beautiful day tomorrow, and our rainmaker, current rainmaker, is sitting across parts of the Pacific Northwest. This is going to be moving through Tuesday. So let me take you through the extent 
extended future cast here to show you what I mean. Now early tomorrow, once that front is through, it's going to be chilly in San Antonio, 39 degrees. Tomorrow's my pick for the weekend because we're going to have sunshine all day long. Tomorrow afternoon, 67, really comfortable with low humidity on your Sunday. Monday should be pretty nice too, but then a trough of low pressure really digs south and pushes its way through Texas. So much so that by Monday night into Tuesday morning, looks like we'll have some showers and perhaps even a thunderstorm. Notice too that early on Tuesday morning, North Texas could be getting some wintry weather, but this is going to be our best chance for rain in a while across South Texas, South Central Texas early Tuesday morning. Right now we're going about a 50% coverage of scattered showers and even a storm and behind that it'll get windy too with gusts up to about 40 miles per hour. Now Sarah and Max, I'm looking at the trans guide cameras. It does look like we have some kind of accident going on uh, right now. We'll I'll do a little bit more digging and see if I could tell you where that is, but I saw a lot of flashing lights there on Transguide. Uh, you'll see it here in just a bit. All right. Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you. 650, 52 degrees out. Well, up next, you've heard about Mrs. Toad in my garden, but what about a mega toad named Toadzilla? Oh my gosh. Why this one could hop into the record books. <sighs> Well, welcome back. Max is making his way back in in just a second. You know what? I knew this story was up your alley, and so why don't you start it hey, up? But can you come join me for, men, uh, you know, for emotional support? Emotional, I'm your emotional support dog, and ironically, we're talking about dogs. We're talking about Chihuahua named Spike. He's officially been awarded the title of oldest living dog, according to Guinness World Records. He looks fantastic. So he was certified in December to have been born at least 23 years ago. So Guinness says... Spike weighs just under 13 pounds. His owner says she found him about 14 years ago in a parking lot. She says she named him after the big ferocious dog named Spike from the Tom and Jerry cartoons. Spike is nearly blind and hard of hearing, but his owner says he still enjoys spending time with animals on their farm and with people he knows. This is adorable. So cute. Way to go, Spike. Okay, meanwhile, take a look at this monstrous toad found in Australia that may break a world record. They're calling it Toadzilla. Check out the monster-sized cane toad recently discovered in Australia's Conway National Park, weighing in at nearly six pounds. Wildlife officials believe it could be the largest toad on record, a title that's been held since 1991. Cane toads were Toads were first introduced to Australian to Australia in 1935. However, they became an invasive species that local rangers say has had a devastating impact on native wildlife. So it looks like it's been hitting the gym. Yeah. <laughs> Got to fight the person in there. All right, time now. 655, 52 degrees out. Here's what's coming up at 7 on Good Morning America. Good Saturday morning to you. Coming up here on GMA, five Memphis police officers now fired for violating department policies during a traffic stop with Tyree Nichols earlier this month that led to his death. His family saying police beat him so severely he was unrecognizable. The new details about what happened while he was detained. Also coming up, the shocking new details about the death of an American tourist in Mexico as questions grow about what happened during his vacation and why his family says they suspect foul play. And how about this one, Van Gogh? The Vincent Van Gogh painting drawing attention to one Detroit museum after one art collector filed a lawsuit for the multi-million dollar artwork. Why the judge dismissed the case? You don't want to miss that. It's all coming up here on GMA. We're going to take a look at Transguide before we leave. It looks like that crash cleared up the southbound lanes at 35 and Nogalitos. That exit ramp was closed for the last about five to ten minutes. They have since reopened it and that traffic is back to flowing smoothly. We do have some sprinkles out there. You can see on the radar right now, mainly on the north side of town, some sprinkles moving through uh, towards Shirts and Selma. We'll be seeing an isolated sprinkle or shower through the early morning hours. Then by noon, still cloudy in 56, clearing skies, 65 for the high temperature this afternoon. We'll be looking at nicer weather tomorrow with a high temperature of 67. Plenty of sunshine, but showers are likely now early Tuesday morning. Awesome. Right. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you so much for watching. We're going to take an hour long break for Good Morning America. We'll see you back here at 8 a.m. See you guys at 8.
Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. A 17 year old in custody this morning after a chase with San Antonio police. What investigators are now saying. Plus the big matchup against the Buffalo Bills and Cincinnati Bengals happening tomorrow. The latest with Damar Hamlin and his recovery right now on GMSA. And back here at home, oh, not a lot to look at out there. 51 degrees to start your Saturday morning. What is the rest of the day? What does the rest of the weekend look like? We're going to check in with Sarah Spivey in just a few moments. But for now, good morning. It is 8 o'clock. It is Saturday, January 21st. Thank you so much good for starting morning. your weekend with us. Love the weekend. Did you make it out and about yesterday? No. No, you <laughs> I mean, I, I, no, I did things, but okay. nothing outdoors. Yep. And the minute that I was outdoor, it was outdoors. It was, it was just kind of gross. It's gross. The allergies were hitting a little bit. Yeah. A little bit of like too much of a breeze, Sarah Spivey. Well, you guys just downers about yesterday's <laughs> weather. You know, I got, out, got a good I got a good run in <laughs> yesterday. Nice. It was cloudy. Yes, and cool. Our high temperature was only 61 degrees. But this morning we're dealing with some sprinkles out there. Take a look at the radar. I turned up the intensity so you could see this. By the way, I want to show you something really cool. So we're looking at a few sprinkles up in the hill country. Did you see that burst of red here right there? That's actually bats. So it's really fascinating to see that early this morning. But again, Again, just a few light sprinkles outside. Otherwise, it's 52 degrees. Winds are generally calm. And as we look at this weekend, today we will see some sun, but it is going to be clearing a little later. 65 for the high temperature. A few sprinkles early this morning. Tomorrow, though, is the winner in my book for the weekend. We're going to have sunny skies all day long tomorrow. Cold start in the 30s. High temperature in the upper 60s. Now, coming up in the week ahead, we do have a much better chance for rain. I'm going to be talking about that in just a few minutes. Max and Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. San Antonio firefighters officially on watch outside a convenience store that was up in flames through the morning. GMSA's Alyssa Cole is live on the city south side where it happened. Alyssa, do we know how that fire started? Sarah, Max, we learned this fire started in a large container outside of the store just around 4 a.m. here on the 3100th block of Commercial Avenue. Now, this is what it looks like after first responders put that fire out. You know, when firefighters first arrived, the building was fully engulfed. They said the fire spread quickly from the front of the building. And this means they had to take a defensive approach to contain the flames. And they were able to do that successfully in a short amount of time. Now, you can see there's extensive damage. So, of course, arson investigators are looking right now to see if this fire was, you know, done on purpose. But right now, there's no word on that. There are crews here on scene and the owners here as well. We did get a chance to speak with them. And, of course, they are upset that their business was you know, of course, burned down, but they tell me they're very happy that, of course, no one was hurt. There were no fatalities, but right now they are investigating to find out if this was done on purpose. Max, Sarah. Thank you, Alyssa. Well, the Air Force major accused of killing his wife, he's going to be in trial on Monday. And the judge overseeing his case just put restrictions on what jurors will hear during the trial. So Andrea McDonald's remains were found burned months after she disappeared back in 2019. Her husband is accused in this case for days. Andre McDonald's legal team has tried to get evidence thrown out. The judge has decided the following. So the jury will not be allowed to hear about the time officers arrested McDonald outside a gun shop. The jury also won't hear about a handwritten note in his pocket listing things like gas cans, flashlights, and bangs. The jury will see search warrants that mention the victim's friend finding blood and hair in Andrine's bathroom. They can also hear about the Bear County deputies and the time they found a shovel. And so you can watch the trial Monday live on KSAT.com, the KSAT Plus app, and KSAT's YouTube channel. We're going to be streaming the entire trial. We're also going to have updates throughout the day on our newscast right here on KSAT 12. A youth basketball game that ended with punches being thrown by parents is under investigation by Universal City Police. So the video shows the fight started after one player was punched by a member of the other team. Witnesses told police they saw, quote, all the parents running onto the court and fighting each other, end quote. So far, no charges have been filed. A parent and coach with the league, David George, was there Sunday, and he hopes this incident serves as a lesson to the families in youth sports to talk about how to control their emotions for both kids and adults. Make conscious decisions. 
And I know it sounds weird, but in the heat of the moment, some people just don't have that mind frame. And we try and teach those kids that. The teen who was punched is okay. A partner of Full Court Athletics told KSAT over the phone they are discussing consequences for those involved. You can read more about this story right now on our website at KSAT.com. Right, we are in the midst of the NFL playoffs and the highly anticipated rematch between the Cincinnati Bengals and the Buffalo Bills. That is happening tomorrow, more than two weeks after DeMar Hamlin's collapse on the field from cardiac arrest. Both teams will now face off in the AFC playoffs in Buffalo. CNN Sports anchor Corey Ryer has more about this weekend's game and Hamlin's recovery. We're being reminded of just how scary, nearly fatal DeMar Hamlin's injury was. His business representative, Jordan Rooney, told me earlier that DeMar still requires oxygen, gets winded easily, his heart is monitored regularly, and he has a lengthy recovery ahead. But he also says that DeMar remains positive and he's ready to overcome this. His teammates are a bit more settled now, and they're comforted knowing that DeMar has been back around the team in that building. It's been good to see him, um, you know, a smile on his face and, uh, you know, guys love having him back in the building. It's been a welcome sight to see DeMar Hamlin back at the Bills facilities on a daily basis this week. To see three just smile and just wave and just, you know, put his hearts up and keep it pushing, you know, it's a, like it's a positive energy bubble that's just floating around the facility. It's been just over two weeks since he suffered cardiac arrest on the field in Cincinnati. I don't like how he went down. We're going to need everybody. I'll call. I'll call. The NFL ultimately canceled that game, but this Sunday, the Bills and Bengals will face each other for the first time since that horrific scene, and there's no question it'll be on the players' minds. Just something that uh, I, I can't get, I can't unsee. Uh, every time I close my eyes, I, it, it, it replays. That tragic moment, though, has also brought out the best in humanity. Fans have donated millions to Hamlin's charity, and others are using the moment to help raise awareness for heart health. Go donate blood, go get CPR certified, whatever you can do, just do one thing that can make a small difference in one person's life, and that's all we ask. A groundswell of support around heart health awareness, around DeMar Hamlin. A Bills coach, Sean McDermott, said earlier that he's not sure if DeMar will be well enough to be at the game. Uh, they just want to support him any way they can. The players say they have to lock in now for this huge playoff game. They have to manage their lingering emotions, the invaders of the mind. One player said that he cannot unsee that scene from the last time they played each other. Kickoff is Sunday at 3 Eastern. And that is... 2 p.m. our time, mm -hmm. but glad DeMar is back. He's in the stadium, and, I mean, just the emotion surrounding the situation and the fact that they are playing the same team that it happened. Yeah. <sighs> Be a good game. Absolutely. Time now, just about 8.08, 21 degrees out. Coming up on Texas Eats, David Elder takes us to one of the newest spots in San Antonio for some amazing gelato. So I was asking, what is the difference between gelato and ice cream? Um... One's it, Italian? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. We'll do some research and we'll come back with that Let answer. Let me start Googling. Speaking of the answer, <laughs> go Spurs go. A familiar face, I had written originally, a familiar foe, coming to town and what a battle on the court it was. We're going to have the highlights in just a bit. Hold on. I'm... You're doing research. You have the doing. laptop out. You're, you're doing a Gelato lot. Gelato has more milk and less cream compared to ice cream. But is it a gelato ice cream day at 51 that degrees? Transition. That's another debate right there. Hey, Sarah Spike will have her weekend forecast when we come back. Good morning. Welcome back. And go Spurs go. So after taking down the Nets on Tuesday, the Spurs had a chance to get a little bit of a win streak going on if they could take down Kawhi Leonard, the familiar face slash foe, and the Clippers. So let's take a look. All right, we got Keldon right here. I love the jerseys. And here we go. Jeremy Sohan getting the Spurs off on the right foot, a three from the wing. Trey Jones jumper is off the mark with Sohan soaring in to slam it down. Jones from the corner doesn't miss that time. And, I mean, they'd have a four-point lead. Second quarter, Romeo Langford swatting Kawhi Leonard. Love to see that. Got the crowd on their feet, obviously. Scramble for the loose ball. Keldon Johnson corrals it, gets the bucket and the foul. Spurs shooting a season-high 66% for the first half. Good enough for top 10 in the NBA this season. Spurs up by seven at break, so we go to the second half. Spurs pushing the pace. Keldon faking the three. Driver to the hoop for a nine-point Spurs lead. Jakob Podol dishing to a cutting Keldon Johnson for the layup. Doesn't fall, but look at that. Jeremy Sohan, the rook, cleaning up two-hand punch. The Clips fight back. 
Kawhi Leonard from three, corner and capping off a 10-0 run, helping the L.A. to a three-point lead going to the fourth. And Spurs managed to tie the game at 100. Josh Richardson, he knocked down the 18-footer. The Clips, too much firepower, and you're seeing that Kawhi Leonard slam in slow motion. It hurts too much. He had 36 on the night, and the Spurs fall 131 to 126. Clippers is a really good team. Have a lot of a lot of guys t from top to bottom, and um, I mean, we had a couple slip ups, but um, I felt as if we played hard. We played hard the whole entire game, and we tried we tried our best um, at containing uh, those two guys. And even though we did um, end up losing, we have a lot of stuff to hang our hats on. Absolutely. I mean, what a game here at home, AT and T Center, not at the Alamo Dome. Love the jerseys, and it is a long season. Next up. Headed to Portland, taking on the Trailblazers, Monday, 9 p.m. Go Spurs, go. Go Spurs, go. All right, 8, 13, 51 degrees. Sarah Spivey. It's miss of January. Is it going to get cold? You know what? It, it's finally going to start feeling like January, not only this weekend, but into next weekend, week as well. And in fact, we have a good chance for rain in the next five days or so. So we've got a lot to talk about. But first, let me get you through the weekend. Taking a look outside, we've got cloudy skies and some sprinkles out there. It's 52 degrees. You can see that even the airport is registering some light rain early this morning. Northwest winds at five miles per hour. It's 50 in Kerrville, 52 in New Braunfels, 50 in Del Rio. 52 in Uvalde, 54 in Creasa Springs, and 54 in Pleasanton. Yeah, so there are some areas of sprinkles out there this morning. They're a little difficult to detect on the radar, but I've gone ahead and turned up the intensity here just so that you can see. Uh, again, a few showers, especially on the north side of town. Uh, anywhere you see this light green, that's where you've got some sprinkles going on. Uh, let's go ahead and zoom in a little bit to the northwest side of uh, the county from San Geronimo all the way to Leon Springs. Just some light rain there, and especially Especially into parts of uh, Comal County. We've got some lighter rain showers moving through Canyon Lake, Smithson Valley into Wimber, Wimberley and through Timberwood Park as well, even into New Braunfels. Uh, otherwise, though, this is not amounting to much, perhaps only about a hundredth of an inch of rainfall in places. Uh, and we do expect any kind of sprinkle activity to end around lunch. Let me show you that on the future cast here. Front to our west going to be clearing skies from west to east. So so that by about noon to 12:30, we do expect clearing skies across the hill country. Still cloudy though here around lunchtime in San Antonio, and yeah, a sprinkle or two is possible. Then as we head into the later afternoon hours, we will see some sun before the sun sets at about six, and skies will clear for all of us after the sun sets, uh, and it'll be a mostly clear evening. So when we look at highs today, a bit of a difference depending on where you live. The further west you live, the more sunshine you're going to see today, the warmer you'll be. So Del Rio, Eagle Pass, Uvalde, low 70s for the high temperature. Right around the San Antonio metro area, we'll have the mid 60s for the high. And the further east you go, the more they'll struggle to get out of the 50s. Look at that. Houston today is going to be in the 50s, about 10 degrees cooler than us in San Antonio because they'll have a little bit more cloud cover throughout the day. But as for us in San Antonio, here's your KSAT 12 hour forecast. A stray sprinkle is possible through lunch. We'll be in the mid 50s around noon, mid 60s. 60s for that high temperature, 65 degrees, partly cloudy skies before the sun sets. And then after the sun sets, we'll have mostly clear skies. So all in all, a cool but pleasant day outside. Let's take a look at our weather setup. Again, you can see the sprinkles up toward Austin with some more robust showers near Houston. That's because of a low pressure system over the Gulf. This is going to be moving along the Gulf Coast today. So better rain chances toward Houston and of course uh, toward New Orleans. Here's a look at the front that's going to help clear skies today. Not a big drop in temperature, but more robust up north near that low pressure system with some snowfall out in Kansas. A and that cold front moving through is going to allow us to have a pretty nice Sunday. Totally sunny skies tomorrow. A cold start at 39 degrees, 60 at noon, 67 for the high temperature, and we'll have a bit of a breeze with northwest winds gusting up to 20 miles per hour. Again, notice how most of that precipitation is around that center of low. Off to the west, this is our next rainmaker. It's currently across the Pacific coast. This is expected to track further south and actually bring us our 
best chance for rain in a while in South Central Texas. Right now we'll go about a 40 to 50% chance Monday night into Tuesday morning for scattered showers, even some wintry precipitation across parts of Texas. So coming up in the next half hour, we'll talk a little bit more in depth about that chance for rain Monday night into Tuesday, but just know as you're planning your week, it is going to be cooler than last week. Highs will only be in the 60s. Mornings will be in the 30s and 40s, and we have a chance for some much needed rain early on Tuesday morning. Max and Sarah, we really need that rain. We really do. It's brown and crunchy out there. <laughs> Thank you, Sarah. 818, 51 degrees up. Today on Texas Eats, David Elder takes us to one of the newest spots in San Antonio for amazing gelato. Is the owner and operator out here at the dessert shop, Moshe D. Thank you so much for having us. Thanks for being here, man. And right in front of us, we got some of the hits off of your menu. Talk to me about this whole place. How did this get started and why gelato? Like, I've always had a passion for desserts and stuff like that, so kind of making your own gelato and experimenting with different recipes and stuff, it was always something that I was really passionate about. And customers come in, they come in happy and they leave even happier, so that's what we're excited about. All right, cheers to you. Cheers. All right, the affogato flight. Give me some elbow, bro. Oh, yeah. Mm. <laughs> I'm in. I like gelato. Love gelato. Uh, would love it even more if David Elder brought us some samples. Neither here nor there. For those watching, what is the difference again between oh, ice I cream just and gelato? I my computer. I don't remember. <laughs> it was like There one was less, right, more gelato milk and gelato, has less milk, cream. Less cream, and they often don't use egg yolk and gelato. I am not an expert. I just Googled it. Okay. <laughs> I'm now 822, 52 degrees south. Guests staying at Disney World, Epcot in Florida will soon not have to remember where they park, what the amusement park is doing to help guests locate their vehicles. Good morning and welcome back. So the parking lots at Disney World's Epcot theme park in Florida, they're getting a fun twist to help guests remember where they parked. If you're like me, you have a lot of problems remembering where you park. In each lot, there's going to be a new character and has names and signs. It's divided into two and will soon have a character marquee from some recent Disney films. In addition, there's a new car locator feature in the My Disney Experience app. It helps keep track of where you parked at Disney. I like this because, you know, you can usually write down the number and the lot, but with that. But, so, but the problem is, like, you're mm -hmm. so, like, inundated at Disney with, like, pictures and characters and then by the end of your visit you're like wait what was it again you know what i mean no i don't no? i haven't uh, no. you ever been to disney i went once how old were you much younger <laughs> it has been many many years time but, to go back Max. but here's the thing you can make it like a family game like if it's a fun character it's like, gonna be like the four-year-old that remembers right like, like the moana right. picture the parents are gonna be so you know yeah. <laughs> fried by the end of also the disney really expensive Super expensive. All right, time now, 827, 52 degrees south. Eight, as construction continues at the St. Mary's Strip, there's also new buildings being added. We'll tell you what's going up. That's after the break. And home prices hitting a record high last year. After the break, we're going to talk about what that could mean for the rest of the real estate market. Good morning, welcome back, and happy Saturday, 8.30 this morning. It is Saturday, January 21st. Sarah Spivey joining us at the desk. Good morning, I am. Sarah. Feels nice. I feel powerful. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So the one thing I love about this, you know, studio right now, it's warm. Yeah, it is warm in here. It's chilly outside this morning. It is cool. And in fact, there are areas of light rain showers and sprinkles out there that you may have to contend with. But generally, it's going to be pretty cloudy until the afternoon. We'll see some sun this afternoon, though. First, though, let's start with a look at the radar. You can see that across parts of Comal and Guadalupe County. That's where we've got some more defined light rain showers. Around San Antonio, though, really just these uh, isolated sprinkles and very light rain showers. One uh, right along I 
I-10 there near Clark High School, my old stomping grounds there, Clark High School, and near Calaveras Lake East Central, we've got some isolated showers too. But again, really across parts of Guadalupe and Comal counties right now, that's where we've got the more defined light rain showers into Gonzales County as well. These are temporary and we're really going to only be running into isolated sprinkles early this morning. Otherwise, it's cool. It's 52 at the airport, 50 in Bulverde, 46 in Bernie, 53 in Hondo, 50 in Bandera, and 50 in Kerrville. Today's forecast calls for clearing skies afternoon, so it's going to stay pretty cloudy during the first part of the day here and cool. Temperatures will only be in the 50s early this morning into the afternoon, and then right around 4 o'clock, that's when we'll see our high temperature of 65. So measly rain out there, just a few sprinkles, but things come together a little bit more for us as far as rain goes in the week ahead. I'll give you those details coming up in just a bit, Max. Thank you, Sarah. New this morning, a 17 year old in custody after facing charges of theft and criminal mischief. He was spotted driving a stolen vehicle on I-10 and that's what led to a chase. Now, San Antonio police say they spotted the stolen vehicle with the front headlights off around 1.30 a.m. They then ran the plates and they found out, yes, it was stolen. Police went after the driver. The teen then crashed this stolen vehicle into a pickup truck, and instead of stopping, he started to run off. He was quickly taken into custody, now facing charges of theft of a stolen vehicle, evading arrest, and criminal mischief. And police asking for your help trying to find two children. The Amber Alert that reached your phones yesterday, it is still active this morning. You may have even seen some of these alerts on traffic signs around San Antonio. Uh, police believe sisters, six-year-old Jennifer Burns and a nine-year-old Jessica Burns, police believe they are with their grandmother in a black Ford Escape with Texans license plate MTC6093. Investigators say they were last seen in North Texas town of McKinney on Thursday night. If you have any information that can help out, you're asked to call the number on your screen, that number 972-547-2700. Well, more homes, more businesses, and soon more police presence. Crews are breaking ground just south of the St. Mary Strip to build a new San Antonio police substation. So the construction is happening on the corner of St. Mary's and Locust Streets. Crews say this project isn't expected to impact the street in this area. Councilman Mario Bravo says 28 new officers will be assigned to the new substation. We have 2,300 housing units that are either in design or being built right now in this area. There will be more presence and uh, faster response times for the area. The project is scheduled to be finished by early next year. Now to a recent scam alert in Kendall County, investigators say people posing as sheriff's deputies, well, they've taken $6,000 from people in that area over a call. So take a listen to what it sounds like. Good afternoon, Ms. This is Lieutenant Majika with the Kendall County Sheriff's Office. I was trying to make contact with you regarding some paperwork that I come across my desk, ma'am. If you could call me back at your earliest convenience. So the Kendall County Sheriff's Office says they do have a lieutenant by that name, but the person calling is not an actual deputy. Investigators say the scammers are also spoofing their number to resemble your area code. A caller usually claims there was a warrant, a missed jury duty date, or some other infraction and asks the victim to send money online. The Sheriff's Office is asking people who receive a call like this, make sure you report it to their office. And the FBI investigating how cyber criminals stole nearly $700,000 from a U.S. Senator's campaign. Someone sent Kansas Republican Jerry Moran's campaign fraudulent invoices just last fall. The campaign's accounting firm wired $690,000 to pay them. Now, all of this according to the Federal Election Commission filing. Now, a Moran campaign spokesperson saying this incident was reported to the law enforcement agency as soon as it was discovered. About $168,000 of the nearly $700,000 has been recovered. Now to the latest on Florida blocking plans for a high-level high school course teaching African-American history. The administration of Governor Ron DeSantis saying the proposed AP course by the College Board lacks educational value and is contrary to Florida law. Here's ABC's Avery Harper with the story. 
The College Board, which administers the SAT and other standardized testing, adding African-American studies to its slate of advanced placement courses. In a letter obtained by ABC News to the College Board, Florida officials rejecting the class, calling it, quote, contrary to Florida law and saying it, quote, significantly lacks educational value. The White House calling Florida's latest move perplexing. It is in, in, incomprehensible. If you think about the study of black Americans, that is what he wants to block. Dr. Lisa Hill is a Connecticut high school teacher who spent years helping craft the class's curriculum. Insulted because of the hard work that we have put into developing the course. The College Board describes it as an exploration of the contributions and experiences of African Americans. It's being piloted in a small number of schools across the country before it's rolled out nationwide to any school that wants to add it as an elective course. You know, trying to make sure that people understand not just the contributions that African Americans have made, but the fact that um, our history did not begin um, with enslavement. The rejection of the course follows the passage of what's known as the Stop Woke Act, legislation that puts restrictions on curriculum and conversations about race in Florida classrooms and workplaces. That law is being challenged in federal court. Florida is where woke goes to die. The Florida Department of Education taking issue with a host of topics in the course, including the discussion of reparations and the Black Lives Matter movement. It's putting in a worldview that we don't agree with. Tina Deskovich is a founder of Moms for Liberty, a conservative group that says it advocates for parental rights. In this class, they're telling you that colorblind is a horrible thing. It's a bad thing. You need to see the color. You need to separate people out. And, you know, we reject that. Hill, who is currently teaching this course in Connecticut, defends its importance. Part of teaching means that you bring in a variety of voices so that you're not listening to one drum beat. And that was Avery Harper reporting. The attorneys for the U.S. Army officer who was pepper sprayed pushed to the ground and handcuffed by a Windsor, Virginia officer during a traffic stop are asking for a new trial. So a jury awarded Second Lieutenant Crone Nazaro around $3,600 this week. The lawsuit was seeking $1 million in compensatory damages. Nazario accused two officers of racially profiling him. A jury determined Tuesday former Windsor police officer Joe Gutierrez assaulted Nazario. The jury also determined officer Daniel Crocker must pay $1,000 in punitive damages for an illegal search of his vehicle. The motion for a new trial filed Friday calls for a new trial on all claims. And the state of Maine has banned the TikTok app from government devices. State employees must stop using TikTok immediately and remove it from their work phones by February 1st. The new rules also apply to employees who use their personal devices for work. Officials say the reason for the decision is security concerns about TikTok's user data possibly reaching Chinese government. And of course, they're one of many states doing so. We had those similar bans here in Texas and across Texas state universities. Time now, just about 840, 52 degrees out. Just ahead, how one woman is helping thousands of women left out on the street, expecting and with no place to call home. Let's take a live look out at the Alamo City. It is 52 degrees out there right now. Saw some sprinkles way early in the morning. What is the rest of the day? What about the weekend? What does it look like? We're going to check in with Sarah Spivey in just a few moments. Welcome back. The aftermath of the pandemic is still continuing to be felt, especially in the homeless population. And that situation even more critical for pregnant women who have nowhere to go for shelter or health care. One in five unhoused women gave birth to a baby who was underweight. Those are tough situations. However, as Nancy Alvarez learned, thanks to one special organization, a lot of homeless pregnant women are discovering a new way to change this trajectory. Victavia George's treasures, the giggles that come along with playing with her daughter, Loyal. A year earlier, she didn't know if this moment would even be possible. I was homeless on the street. Uh Pregnant. 48% of women currently living in a shelter in the U.S. are pregnant. Fortunately, Victavia found a way out through the San Francisco nonprofit Homeless Prenatal Program founded by Martha Ryan. Our focus has always been on pregnant moms and women with small children, helping them get the support they need so they can exit homelessness. 
Station. Ryan, a trained nurse, changed course when she learned years ago about the crisis many were facing in their lives. What went through my mind was how could this be? HPP has become nationally recognized for helping more than 3,500 families annually with health care, housing and aid. And we believe in the potential of each and every one of the families that walks through our door. Including George's, who found her true potential when staying at the homeless prenatal program's Jelani House. It's a safe haven where unhoused new moms can live and restart their lives. We've always wanted to have a place where a woman could come to get the services to help her become the best mother that she could be. George's is now thriving, back in school with a job lined up and a new apartment. I'm ready to start this new chapter in my life. I'm Nancy Alvarez reporting. That is such a good story. I'm glad there's an organization out there helping all those people. All right, time here, 845, I had to wait for it to switch. 52 degrees. People have been messaging me being like, you have to put it in perspective because in the Northeast there's blizzards. And then we it's saw true. ABC and I turned to Sarah Costa and I was like, see, it's cold over there. Be happy it's only 52. Yeah, I know, but if you're a South Texas girl mm. like me who grew up in this area, you know, we're not, you like it's 50s is like, it's cold, but it's, I don't know. It's cold enough for a jacket. That's all Fair. I'm going to say. And you My should have a jacket cold. today. Hey, guys, I got the pollen count in. And, um, you know, it looks pretty good, actually, for this time of year. We're in the middle of mountain cedar season. And today, for at least today, mountain cedar is low, the lowest it's been since the new year at 90. And molds are present in low amounts, too. So not too shabby in the pollen count today. Although I do have to say, with winds shifting to the north tomorrow, we may see that number go up. Mountain cedar season officially ends around uh, about Valentine's Day. So we still got a few weeks to go. 50 in Holotus this morning. It's a chilly 46 in Bernie, 52 in New Braunfels, 53 in Hondo, and 51 in Kerrville. We also don't have sunshine to help us out. It's cloudy once again this morning. You can see out at the airport right now, cloudy skies. The airport even reporting some very light rain at the moment, not measurable, but still uh, there are areas of sprinkles out there. Northwest winds at about five miles per hour. Here's a look at the radar right now. I turned up the intensity so that you can see the sprinkles. So they're very, very light. Let's go ahead and zoom in to areas right near the airport. We were just talking about the airport. So Hollywood Park area right along 1604, just near Reagan, seeing some of that light rain. Also near Garden Ridge, Selma Shirts, Zool, New Berlin, Adkins, Boltville, and up into New Braunfels and Comal County. We're really seeing a little bit more of the light rain showers throughout Comal and Guadalupe County also toward Luling early this morning as well and in Gonzales. So Gonzales, you're getting some light rain showers. Similar story for Poth and for Floresville, but these are very few and far between and we do not anticipate sprinkles all day long. In fact, by about lunch, that's when we should start to see things uh, taper down around San Antonio as far as the sprinkles are going. And this is a look uh, at the future cast An approaching front. This is a weak front. The only thing the front is going to do is help turn our winds to the north and clear skies. Notice that around lunch, it's already starting to clear out west here in San Antonio. We still could have a sprinkler to around lunch locked into cloud cover until about 2 p.m. and then we'll be seeing skies clear. But notice that for our friends off east toward Gonzales and Hallettsville, staying cloudy pretty much all day long. So when you look at your KSAT 12 hour forecast, 20% chance for a sprinkle or two through about lunch. Northeast winds today at about five miles per hour. We'll start to see some sun at two and by about four or five p.m. we'll have partly cloudy skies, 65 degrees for the high temperature quickly because coming chilly this evening after sunset around six. So take the jacket with you if you have evening plans. Forecast highs today, depending on where you live. If you're out west of San Antonio, it'll be warmer in the low 70s because you'll see sun quicker. Mid 60s around San Antonio and off to the east upper 50s, struggling to get out to the 50s. So neighborhood view 68 in Bandera, 66 in Castroville. It'll be 64 at Stinson. Quick check of the weather setup here. We've got some showers across Houston area. This is that front that's going to move through, bring us a nice Sunday. This is Tuesday's rainmaker that's going to dig a little bit further south. So as we look at the future cast early tomorrow, total sunshine, but chilly start 39 degrees early on Sunday. Sunday afternoon, tomorrow afternoon 67. 
and then that trough of low pressure digs south. This brings us our best chance for rain in a while in San Antonio and South Central Texas Tuesday, Monday night into Tuesday morning. Notice that there will even be some snow across North Texas, but here in San Antonio looks like all liquid. Hopefully we'll get some decent rain from that right now. We're going about 40 to 50% coverage. It'll be windy behind that system on Tuesday and notice that as we end January, things are even going to be cooler than seasonably average. Highs will only be near 60 degrees. Mornings will be in the 30s. So uh, a cooler weather pattern with a shot at rain Monday night and Tuesday morning. So nothing freezing. Right, no week. wintry precipitation for us Monday night into Tuesday. So no need to cover the plants or any of that kind of business. Right. Okay. And of course, if that changes, we'll be the first to let you know. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. Just about 850, 52 degrees out. We're going to take a look outside with Transguide. That shot there, a little overexposed, but you can see uh, traffic moving, moving smoothly at 35 in Nogalitos. If any incidents or crashes occur or backups occur, we will let you know about them. All right, let's take a look at these lotto numbers. Pick three, two, four, six, fireball two. Daily four, six, three, five, eight, fireball two. Cash five, 11, 16, 18, 34, 35, and Mega Millions, 20, 29, 31, 64, 66. Mega Ball 17, Mega Plier 4. Good luck. The Los Angeles County Coroner has revealed the cause of death for comedian actor Leslie Jordan. So Jordan was pronounced dead at the scene of a car crash in Hollywood back in October. The coroner reports that Jordan died of sudden cardiac dysfunction and a cardiovascular disease condition. The actor was best known for his work on the TV show Will and Grace, an American Horror Story. All right, check this next story out. Archaeologists unearthing crocodile mummies from a tomb in Egypt. This sounds like the start of every Ooh. horror mo movie where you're not supposed to go into the tomb. So they actually made the discovery during excavation in 2019. The tomb contained five skeletons and five skulls of large crocodiles. And here's the cool part. It dated back to before 304 B.C. The crocodiles are thought to be from two different species. Archaeologists believe the remains were buried as part of a ritual honoring an ancient Egyptian god linked to crocodiles. For God's sake, put it back. <laughs> Do you remember, you know, in the movie The Mummy, when the mummies come alive? The Brandon Fraser version. Right. Yeah, the OG, the, the, the best one. one. Yeah, the, the only one. And can you imagine, like, and they're like all chasing him, they're like emo tech, whatever. And then can you imagine part of them being crocodiles? I think you just wrote The Mummy 17. <laughs> right? Time now, it's just about 8.55, 52 degrees out. We'll be right back. All right, before we go to break, we want to tell you that the Children's Ballet of San Antonio are looking for dancers, actors, and vocalists for their upcoming spring performance of Sleeping Beauty. Those auditions are taking place next Saturday. They will be held at the Dance Center of San Antonio at 126 West Rector. All dancers, gymnasts, actors, and vocalists ages 3 to 19 are invited to register for an audition time online. We have all that information right now on our website, ksat.com. All right, we still have a lot more to come here on GMSA, and today families are going to have the opportunity to discover different education opportunities across the Alamo City. So coming up, we're going to have all the details on a free school fair event happening downtown today, one of my favorite places in the city, the Duseum Museum for Kids, and we're going to check in with Alyssa Cole in just a bit. Very excited for that. Okay, it's 857, 52 degrees. We'll be right back. <laughs> 